Tonight's book is about travels. Turkey, Persia, and thence on to India. Now, Mr. Uh, Tavernier, or Tavernier, bought and sold precious gems, including diamonds. At the time, India was the diamond capital of the world, because South Africa hadn't been discovered yet, and neither had Botswana, which is now the number one producer of diamonds. Still, the, uh, the travels are rather interesting. Oh, man, what they had to go through. Uh, just the transportation alone was enough to kill you. Then you have the various pashas and rajas and so on of every region you went through since international law. Oh, please. Not for ordinary people. No nation goes over, goes to war for one person, especially just a rich jewel merchant. I mean, really. So, what we have is, is to get to here to there. You travel this way. This you'll see on the way. And here's a story that I heard. Or here's what happened to me. Or Now, unfortunately, it's all seen through a snooty kind of lens. Those of a different faith are idolatrous, for example. But he seems to have been friendly with practically everybody because he made six voyages. He was always well received. He didn't seem to run into any problems, at least none that he really made a fuss about at the time. He was always careful to note down pluses and minuses where he could. He tried to describe how the people built their houses, what they grew, what they wore, how they behaved, uh, even in some cases where it's not the most salubrious. Some people do have the very odd habits. And uh, the trouble is, he seems to have believed every horrible tale he was told. This third hand reported, well, uh, I heard in so-and-so that a merchant had shot a peacock while on the Raja's land, and they, of course, killed him for it. Okay, apparently hunting is not permitted by the Rajas unless the Raja sets it up, because I guess he holds title to all the game. Okay, be that as it may. Then, uh, he does, however, give very accurate descriptions. And true to his word, he does tell you what's good, what's bad, what's ugly. And he has always a good word to say about anybody, which is rather nice. So, between stories, hearsay, and the actual what he himself witnessed, there's a huge gulf. Also, the other problem is if you have difficulty reading the elongated Fs, and have a problem with that, or somebody that looks like an F at the front of a word that should begin with an S, as in snake, snape, and snickerdoodle, you're going to have difficulty reading the text, because that's how they wrote back then. He does not include a great deal of French, but you, you will every now and again see unpronounceable foreign names, mostly in bold print. He does try to describe the various titles, 
the various positions, major cities, rivers, bays, and so on. It's quite a travelogue and quite a quite an atlas in words, not pictures. So you can learn a lot, such as even back then, the apricots from the Middle East are far superior to our own. Unfortunately, it's about the only thing that was at the time. So, it's a very amusing book, very interesting book, but you have to have a barrel of salt with it. Especially as far as the tales go. There are some illustrations showing the various coins of the regions, it's the quality of the text is somewhat marred with sundry black marks hither thither, tend to obscure things. For example here, we also have the little quaint habit down here at the bottom of the page, perhaps you can see it. The first word of the subsequent page will also be printed down here. And when you turn it over, yes, that is the word that appears. In this case, the word is surprised. And did you notice how it was spelt? This is the word surprised. Begins with an, what appears to be an F, as in fox. But such was the style back then. Here are some Arabic coins. with the text. Yes, back then Arabic was it. Also you will find later on in the margins what's known as glosses. Basically it gives you a very shorthand way of knowing what is going to be in this particular paragraph. As you can see there's several on a page. This also was very common. You can even see such things in the uh, in the first books written by the Puritans. It was printed in Britain, of course, but it was written and sent back for printing, and then the copies sent over later. But you also find them there in the 1700s and even into the 1800s. You'll find glosses and uh, the whole thing about the little... They even also use that horrible F for S, which is dreadful. All in all, it's a very interesting book, but you have to get used to the style. I find it easy to read and most entertaining. So I would recommend it for those who are into travel. Back when travel took more than a passport, visa, and an airline ticket. Thank you for watching and please do come again.